Well, hi, it's Jim here, and uh, we're not in my shop, we're in my office, and I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, what I do with ham radio, and I don't do an awful lot. There are so many things you can be doing in ham radio. I've focused on one thing, which is a digital mode transmission, which means I don't use my microphone, I don't ever talk, I don't even have a microphone plugged into my ham radio right here by the way this is the ham radio right there um, I do everything with my keyboard Here's my keyboard and I use a mode called PSK 31 which stands for face shift keying but you don't need to worry about and the 31 is the bandwidth 31 Hertz I just had to run away and interrupt a cat fight for <laughs> some kind of cat thing that was going on. Sorry about that. So, um, this mode of operation is uh, assisted or is completely operated by software. That's what you see on this screen here. This is a program, one of quite a few, freely available on the internet. Uh, this one is called DM780 with digital mode 780, and it's part of another software package called Ham Radio Deluxe, which uh, is what I use uh, when I want to uh, do some short wave listening. And I use my digital radio. You can just see a bit of it sitting right here. And you need software to run that. But never mind Ham Radio Deluxe. DM780 is the name of this piece of software here. So what I'm going to do in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to tour you around my radio very briefly. I'm going to assume you, you know a fair bit about this already. And then we'll get into what's going on on the screen here and what uh, um, PSK31 is. I'm doing this at 10, you know, a little after 10 uh, in the morning. Uh, a little after 9 actually, I think. Uh, 9.30 because we just changed the clocks. And uh, this is really a bad time of day to be doing this. Because at the moment, there's virtually nothing to receive. Now also, <coughs> I have the sound down on my ham radio, so you can't hear it right now. When I turn it up, you'll probably hear some Morse code. And that's kind of an unusual thing, uh, to hear Morse code while you're doing PSK31. The uh, people operating the different modes stay apart. So let's start with the radio. And what's going on here? Maybe I'll just move the camera over right here. Okay, there's my towering radio. <laughs> so, it's an older radio. I bought it at a ham flea, uh, uh, a flea market. So, it's tuned to 14.070. There's five, six, or seven places where PSK31 is used on the ham bands. This is probably the most popular one. 20 meter band, 14 megahertz, 14.070, right on. You just dial it, your radio, right to that spot, and guess what? You never tune it again. You just leave it there. There's no tuning when you do uh, PSK31, or at least in the sense that we're familiar with. <clears throat> so that's where my radio is, and it's just running in a regular uh, single sideband mode. Is it running in single sideband mode? Yes, and so we're listening to this in quick gym, upper sideband. So we go to upper sideband mode for this. Now I'll give you a quick tour around the software here. There's a number of panes or panels on the screen right now. Okay. One of the most interesting ones is this one. This is where received, 
don't know what they call it, type, received type will show up down here. Now right now it's receiving nothing. Down here is where the things I might type appear, uh, either as I'm sending them or I type them in ahead of time and then click send and it will send out what I've typed here. So you can see it says CQ, CQ, VE3, JXM, that's me. And then they put a K at the end of it, I don't know why, that's just the practice, probably a uh, probably something from uh, uh, Morse code days or CW. But then the most interesting part is what's going on down here. Now, basically, that's a, uh, a display of the sideband, the upper sideband, for 14.070, where the radio, wherever the radio is tuned. And so you can see these around 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 hertz, 600 hertz, 700 hertz, a kilohertz, 2 kilohertz, all the way out to 3 kilohertz. And so if you were to transmit at 14.070 a tone at 1000 hertz, and I received it, it would form a line right under this 1000 hertz spot right here. Now, when you look at my screen, you see all these little lines coming down. Uh, those are artifacts of some kind of hum or interference or something like that. They just ignore them, okay? The two real radio signals are this one and this one. And there may be some more in there. We can't see them, but believe it or not, the software can still pick them out. Now, how do we get what this guy is sending up onto the screen? I have to move this right above him. I'll do that with my mouse. Okay, so he just went off the air. He just finished broadcasting, so there's nothing there to listen to. So we'll try this fainter signal up here. And I'll put the sound on a little bit so you can hear this. Now you'll see some taping going on up here. Thanks for the QSO, Joe73. May God bless you and your family. <clears throat> so this is a live broadcast. Here's another one. There's a faint one in here, one here, one here. This one's fairly strong though. And now he's finished and see it's just disappeared. Oh, and here comes the answer from the other person. K4PEW the W8JXM. Oh my gosh. JXM? How was that for a wild coincidence? Because I'm VE3JXM. Fabulous Paul, yeah, sunk money into the antenna system as this is the last home for me. And on and on. And you can see there's a number. Now here's the thing to realize. This is the coolest thing about this whole thing. Kind of made my eyes pop out. My radio is still tuned to 14.070. I'm not moving the radio at all. Each one of these is 31 hertz wide. That's why it's PSK 31. So you can put these right side by side each other. And if we were doing this at 4 or 5 in the afternoon, this thing would be full of all kinds of transmissions like this. And not just you know American ones not far from me. Uh, there'd be all there'd be European ones and all the all the other stuff. So here let's uh, well we've been listening to this one. Oh here let's listen to this guy. He just came on. Did you hear the tone? If you notice the tone was a lower pitch because he's lower down the band. He's around 925. K4AK to 4WZW Bob. When you mentioned the villages. I knew you would have to be a bit ingenious for your antenna needs. So there you go. Now here's a really cool thing. You don't have to go one at a time. Right now we're going one at a time. I click on it like this and then we see it. CQ, 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 you know. We can see all these at the same time with this really cool setting. Now what's happened is the band that was down below is now on the side coming across this way as you can see and the radio automatically I never realized how bad a flash there is on my screen there. Let me just put it over like that. 
this light coming in from my window. And it decodes each one of them simultaneously and, and writes it in here. So I'm hoping you can read some of those. Here's one. YV5EM. I don't know where YV is, but it's certainly not North America. Here's a guy talking about homebrew power, 30 watts, back to you, and so on. So I'm not going to brought. I'm not going to transmit. Uh, I have to check my. I haven't done this for a little while, so I really have to check out my radio before I do that. I don't want to try that live on the air. It takes just a couple of minutes to get it all sorted out. And uh, you know, you have to hook up the, your output of your uh, amateur radio uh, into your sound card. And getting all the levels right in that's a little bit challenging. But uh, if you're like me, you like those kinds of challenges. And fiddling around a bit. So so there you are. PSK31 ham radio. I don't even have a microphone. And yet I have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, oh, I know what I can show you here. Hmm. Uh... Let me try one more thing here, would you? I'm winging it now, and I don't like to wing it. This is the most surprising thing of all, I think. I was really floored. This piece of software has a few hidden secrets, this DM780. One of them is you can kind of link through the internet. I shouldn't put it that way. You can associate yourself through the internet with everybody else who's using this piece of software. And you can do it on this website here. Okay. Now, bear with me for a moment here. I'll zoom in a little bit. So, each one of these dots represents someone just like me with the same software running ham radio switched on computer connected to the internet so there's a dot in here for me somewhere up around here near Toronto so this is a number of ham radio people right now who are on PSK 31 the different colors represent the different bands they're using so 20 meters is this yellow color here 20 meters that's where we are. And I look at Europe. I can tell you, a year ago, you would never see this many people. The PSK 31 is really exploding. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of people using it. Now, not only can I see who's who's using the software right now, but if I send out a signal, if I send out a CQ, you know, CQ, CQ, VE3, JXM and some of these other radios receive it their software will decode it discover my code VE3JXM and then at an internet website this website it will register the fact that that receiver heard me and then I can control this display until it shows me which radios have received my signal and it requires no operator involvement. In fact, the people with the radios, including me, because mine's doing this right now, we're totally unaware that, in fact, our radio has decoded a signal that's come in, got the ham license number, and then posted information back on this mapping website. So I can't do it right now because I have not been broadcasting. A little later today, I think when thing conditions get better, I'll go ahead and broadcast and we'll see who picks me up but in the end I'll be looking at a map something like that well, let me just check and see what you're seeing here yeah. okay this is a printout from that same website and those uh, flags you see on it are radios that receive my signal so I can sit here here's another one look at this an awful lot of activity down around Florida. These are these are a couple of the first times I did it. Look, in January, that's 2010. January 9th, 
this is really exciting stuff. I mean, I don't even I don't even have to talk to anybody at all. I just rely on the software to provide interesting information. I don't even need to talk to anybody. Just fire out my CQ. If somebody answers, then I'm talking. If nobody answers, their radios are automatically detecting me and reporting it to that uh, mapping website we were looking at. So, uh, fantastic stuff. Um, there's quite a few pieces of software that handle this stuff. There's software that handles everything from, yes, Morse code or CW, which I'm sure if you're a ham radio operator, you know most of this stuff. Uh, but if you're not going near ham, you might think ham radio is dying, or you might even think it's dead and gone. But ham radio is bigger than ever. There are more ham radio licenses in the world today than there ever have been. And it's things like this. Because the ham radio guys, they don't run away from technology. Of course. They bring it in and use it. And uh, if you're not familiar with ham radio, I'll say one last thing. If you've been texting on your phone, and sometimes you text out LOL, you know, laughing out loud, and you think, wow, that's pretty modern language. Well, it's not. That kind of stuff, that short form in particular, LOL, was used in the 50s by ham radio operators sending Morse code because you know Morse code is just text it's just a way of texting so ham radio guys know all this but if you're not familiar with ham radio you, you might have no notion of what's going on here so hope you enjoyed that um, and uh, maybe I'll shoot another one with me doing some uh, some transmitting a little later today so thanks for watching this.